Hey, my name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. I'm a new web developer, and I've learned that by teaching through the things I'm learning, it helps me cement those, and hopefully can be a help to you as well. Today, we're going to do this little animation for a website, kind of the first time you would load. But after the first time, the animation won't show anymore because we're going to store something in local storage. So every time that somebody comes from to your site from a new device, they'll see a little animation run. And every time they come from the same device, it will know and it won't run that again so that it won't frustrate your visitors as they return. Uh, here's what it would look like. I've just, uh, if I refresh this here, you see it shows this little splash page the first time I go and then kind of animates out, fades out. Um, but now if I were to reload it, or even if I were to actually shut this down and open the tab again and run it again, it's not going to show that animation because we've stored it in local storage. Again, if you show this every single time somebody visits your site, that can be a little frustrating. But uh, I found that it kind of, it gives a unique experience if somebody comes the very first time. Um, and then it also conveniently lets you load all your CSS and your HTML, JavaScript, all that stuff behind uh, the very first time so that uh, your site is quick and it's already sitting there when the, the animation fades away. Um, and then, like I said, because everything gets cached, and the next time they come back, your site should be super fast and you won't have to show that animation. And we're going to do that by storing that in local storage. So. Our setup is pretty basic here. You see we just got uh, this index.html page. And here I've just got these cards that you can see over here. Um, I've actually got that up on a different directory. So here's our, here's our actual live um, server here. And um, then I just linked to this first visit.js, which is empty currently. Um, so let's go ahead and console log. It works, all right? There's nothing like running something and then realizing after the fact that it um, it's not working. So let's come in here, console log, works. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, well back to this index.html page, we're just gonna write our style, um, our stuff inline here and that'll hopefully run, help it run quickly and uh, it won't have to load a style sheet to do this animation. And it's still only gonna run the first time anyhow, uh, hopefully that won't be a big deal. We're gonna actually write um, some, some HTML here that will load the very first time. And then once again, we won't load this. You could do this in your JavaScript, but I've just done it here um, to make it a little simpler for us. Okay, so what we're gonna do is just add a couple of uh, items. So let's go ahead and for now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Let's uh, add another class here and we're gonna call this um, loading uh, background. All right, so we'll just do loading BG. So what we've done, is we have a, a container and inside that container we have another div. And then finally, we're gonna add another container for our actual image. So loading, we'll call this image container and close that out. And then finally, one more uh, little piece of HTML. We'll just add an image tag and we'll do a loading image. And we're gonna go ahead, let's just do a width of like 250 on this so that it's actually got um, a, a base width to work off of, so it doesn't load super huge. We're gonna have, um, this is in our dist folder, and it's in images, and it is our splash.svg. Okay, it's always a good idea to add an alt tag, so we'll do like loading screen image, something like that. Okay, so that's all the HTML we're gonna add. We're gonna come up now here to the style tag and just kind of flush this out a little bit. So we'll come up here, and this is where we'll do um, I guess we'll need to select that class first for this is the outer um, wrapper, that loading wrapper. And we'll just do position relative Z index. We want this to be above all the rest of our content because it's going to hold everything else in that wrapper. Okay, so we've got our loading tag. Let's grab that loading background now. And this one is the one we'll uh, fix it. And we'll do a top zero, bottom zero, right zero. I can type in left zero. The background color um, we'll do as white and then opacity so that we can kind of fade it off here. We'll do one and transition all, let's do like 600 milliseconds, uh, ease out, something like that, okay? So we're starting with this full opacity because we're gonna decrease the opacity in our JavaScript and this transition will make that fade uh, animation work. 
You could also do this with like CSS animations or, or other things, but this is just how I've chosen to do it here. All right, we've got a couple other things we got to grab. Remember, we've got the image container and we'll do display flex and a width of 100 view width and a height of 100 view height and justify content center align items center. This just will place our image in the middle of that image container. That leaves only one thing left, and that would be our loading image. And we're going to go ahead and say opacity 1, uh, transition all 300 milliseconds, and we'll do ease out as well. And I guess let's come up here. Um, all right, so let's before, before I do that, one other thing here, let me just show you kind of what this would look like so far. So if we come over here, it's just going to be uh, situated here. Let me actually bring this back over. I think if I load this, yeah, it should load. Um, I'd rather have Chrome o o over here on the side <laughs> just because it's a little easier, but uh, technically this is the thing that's reloading automatically. So I'll just have to come over here and manually reload that if that's okay with you. Uh, now, as you notice here, this is in the middle but like on a mobile screen, it's actually probably going to have that little bar at the bottom and stuff like that. So it looks like it's a little drop down. So I uh, oftentimes on these kinds of things, I'll do a transform and do a translate Y and then negative 50%. So half of its of the container here, it'll be half as high or, you know, up <laughs> half that amount. So if I reload here um, and come back here, this will actually uh, show that. So it'll be just slightly higher. Okay, um, I think that's all we've got to do now. Let's just come over to our JavaScript. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this. We know it works um, because we set it up to. Um, now that I've kind of <laughs> uh, just got my JavaScript in this, let me go ahead and do this just so it's a little easier to see what's going on. So let's go ahead and the first thing we're going to do is actually figure out if this is, um, or we're going to go ahead and write the function to kind of fade it away. So we'll do a loading fade. This tells it to to fade away and we're going to grab a few constants here we want that loading background uh, that is the actual white area that's fixed you might remember and we'll do document dot query selector and we're going to grab that class loading background is what we called it and then we want to grab the image as well so what we're going to do is fade the image off first just slightly um, and then fade the background off next, uh, just slightly delayed from each other. I need to come in here and add image. Okay, and all we're going to do is change both of those styles. You might remember over here in our CSS, we made them both opacity one. So to kind of fade that away, we'll do um, the loading background dot style dot opacity equals zero. Okay, so that'll fade it away. And we'll come in here and change image. All right, so if we were to run that, like if we come in here and we manually run that here, so if I do loading fade, you see how it fades that away. Now, technically, it's still here, so I can't click on any of these links because we actually have behind the background that was white and behind the image in its image container and all that, we've got the actual loading um, container. And so that's still there in its um, absolute positioning and it's Z index 100, you might remember. So it's above all of this. So if we try to click on any of these links, they're not going to even, they won't animate, can't get to them. So the next thing we need to do is actually remove that container itself. So that can be fairly easy here. We'll just say um, function uh, loading remove. And we'll say constant loading. This is the container document dot query selector and we just called it loading and you might imagine what we're going to do here we'll just do loading style display equals none okay so now if i were to run this again first i'll have to run that loading fade and then i'll do loading remove and now oh i don't know if i saved this um, i guess let's run this and it should just take everything off can't find variable document well, that is because I did not spell it correctly. All right, so there we go. So now I can actually come over here and hover over these, and you'll see that that whole area is gone. Now, if we just were to remove that, um, 
you'll notice that it's just real sharp and it just snaps away. So that's why we have go ahead and we have this loading fade first. So again, if I come back into here uh, and we do loading fade, it fades it away. And then we want to run loading remove and actually remove that entire thing, including the, the container, which doesn't animate or anything, but it does allow us to actually click and get around. So now let's do um, some saving in the uh, in the actual local storage. So this is on the client side, on their mobile device, on their computer, tablet, whatever. When they come to our website, we can actually write something to their local storage. And you might notice you've got these little tabs here. You've got cookies and session storage. This is basically if they keep the tab open. But you've also got this little local storage. And here, this is from an earlier running, you can see that I've already written in this key, visited one. So we'll go ahead and delete this for now. But what we're going to do is we're going to write that whenever they first come, we're going to write that uh, in to their local storage. And that'll be stored there until they clear it, if they clear their cache or something like that. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll say, uh, let's go ahead and grab that constant. So we're going to just call it visited. All right, so we'll just say const first visit. So if this is their first visit, we'll do local local storage dot get item. Now there is no item called visited yet because we haven't created it, but that's okay. We're going to grab it and say if if it's there. Well, currently it's not there as you can see, but we'll go if first visit and then we'll go equal to null then and we'll go window for the entire window set interval. So what we're gonna do is actually set a timer uh, when they first show up, if it's equal to nothing, they don't have anything there, then what we're gonna do is say, say we're gonna do our loading fade function. Now you actually don't wanna add these parentheses here because that will run it itself. What we want it to do is to call it. So we're just gonna reference it like that. And then we're gonna pass a value in milliseconds. So 2800 milliseconds is just under three seconds. Three seconds would be 3,000, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove, uh, we're gonna run that loading remove, okay? And again, you don't want those parentheses yet. So after the first one runs, we'll run the second one. Um, now what we could do is actually do like a animation end or something like that, or transition end, I think it would be uh, here, but I, this is just how I've done it here um, because it's easier to copy it down. Okay, the next thing and the final thing we need to do here is in that local storage, um, now that they've been there the first time, we've done the animation, we actually want to set an item. And we're going to call this visited and then one. All right, so that's the value we're going to pass in. Visited is the key that we're creating, and one is the value. So we're just going to pass a number in there. Um, and then we'll do else. So in other words, this is all if they haven't been there before. We're going to run this animation or this uh, function, then this function, and then we're going to set a key with a value of one. If they've already been to our site before, there should be something called visited one, all right? Rather than actually ask for it and say like, if it's one, then do all this stuff, we'll just say else. If, if basically, if there's anything there at all, then go ahead and just run loading remove immediately, which again is just gonna strip out everything. So if we've done this correctly, we hit save and we rerun this here, you'll notice there it is, and we can refresh this as often as we want, and that's not gonna show. Now, if we come in here and we delete this, and then we refresh, it'll show that, and then just wrote it quickly there, and then it removed it, okay? So that's uh, uh, an easy way to create an animation, and if you run the animation uh, the first time they come, it allows you to load everything behind the scenes, and then store it something in local storage, and that way, when they return, it doesn't show again, and uh, that allows you to kind of get the best of both worlds. Give them a, a unique kind of fun first experience, but you don't have to annoy them by loading some kind of splash screen every time they come to your page. So hopefully it was helpful for you, and I had fun doing this. Happy coding.